Hi guys, this is Jeff at Slayton's Racing. This video is about CAN bus, which is an electronic protocol technology new to KTM dirt bikes. And it's now used on uh, the KTM off-road models, but it's been used on uh, other KTM models for many years, uh, such as the adventure models like the 790, 890, 1290, all those big adventure bikes, as well as the, the street models, the Dukes. And it's, all, it's been used for many years. It was actually uh, first started on BMW motorcycles. That was the first motorcycle ever to get it, and that was back in the early 2000s. All right, so uh, as with all my videos, I try to dumb them down to where uh, this techno technological information is more understandable you know, for the guy who's just getting into dirt bikes, as well as the guy who's been working on them and riding them for years. So. Uh, anyhow, um, this is a very basic, rudimentary explanation of what CAN bus is. If you have questions, you're welcome to post them down below, and I'll try to answer them. Uh, first of all, I want to just show you a couple of things underneath the seat here that I'm going to be using acronyms for throughout uh, this conversation here. So this is uh, the brain box for the bike. This controls the, the engine performance, the fuel injection, the ignition system on and on. And it's called an ECU. Um, some people call, say that the, those letters stand for electronic control unit. Uh, more technically on this particular unit it should be called an engine control unit or an ECM which is engine control module. There's also electronic control units which is what this is. This was, does not really control the engine. It controls other parts of the electronic system. So that's that's also called an ECU or an ECM. All right, guys, so let's start off with what CAN bus is. All right, so to start off with, CAN is an acronym. Uh, it's, you know, it's just short for control, excuse me, controller area network. Uh, it's a communication protocol that is widely used in the automotive industry. It's also used in, in industrial automation, uh, like automotive factories where they have hundreds of robots that are need to communicate and then also within that robot there's a, a CAN system, uh, medical equipment and, and manufacturing and then also you know tractors, buses, pretty much anything with wheels anymore uh, and an engine is, is probably a CAN bus and then the KTM uh, street models so like the Dukes and the Adventure models uh, they've had CAN bus for years because they've got multiple ECUs and that's the, one of the main reasons why CAN bus was invented was for the ECUs to communicate, whether it be the engine management, management ECU or just the other controllers in there. They all need to talk to each other, and they have to do that in real time. Uh, and then all the other different components, like these new map switches on, the, on these 24s, uh, the aftermarket companies are struggling to make a a uh, less expensive version of that because it's it's a very high-tech switch. It's got a, actually a little computer chip in it. And that's all part of the CAN bus system. So, you know, CAN bus, uh, you know, it's just an electronic communication technology, basically. It allows all the different components to talk to each other, to communicate back and forth. Uh, you know, the ECUs, uh, the map switches, uh, the electronic power valve, the APS brakes, the traction control, you know, yada, 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 the list goes on of the different things it has to communicate with. And then, um, you know, it's commonly referred to within the industry as like the, as the two-wire system because basically there's just two wires that make up the system and those are called can high and can low. Um... And, you know, it's, it sends out what, what, what they call data frames, which are little groups of information. It's kind of like sending text back and forth to your buddy. It's real similar to that. I like to try to think of things in simple terms. So it just makes it easier to understand for me as well as other people, I think. And each one of the components that, that are in that uh, chain of item of uh, components that are being uh, talked to, they have their own identifier, which is like a serial number. And so the CAN system knows who, who it's talking to. And, you know, 
Cars these days uh, are loaded with CAN, with the CAN bus system. Uh, any modern car has at least 30 uh, ECUs in it that, you know, that need to talk to each other. And fancier cars will have up to 150 ECUs for all the different systems, you know, the traction control, all the different things that are on the dash these days. Uh, all those things have got to communicate. So it's, it's pretty common for there to be 30 to 100 ECUs in almost all cars and trucks these days. And then the fancy vehicles that have lots of bells and whistles, they're going to have up to 150 ECUs or ECMs, whichever you prefer to call them. And those all have to talk to each other to uh, basically synchronize and, uh, be, and work together all the time. All right, guys, uh, so a little, uh, little bit of the history of the system. It was invented back in 1986 by the Robert Bosch Group, this electronics company in Germany. And, you know, they were looking for a reliable communication protocol for, for all these different uh, electronic components uh, so they could talk to each other. And, and they were also looking for ways to make the system uh, more simple and more reliable, and they've accomplished that. Uh, CAN bus systems are known for their reliability. And it also allows them to reduce the, the size and the magnitude and the complexity of the wiring harness, the wiring loom. Uh, the old uh, style wiring looms were called point to point, which means there's a lot more wires in there and wires heavy and it's expensive and it's bulky. And so this system helps streamline all that. Um, let me think of where I would go from here. Okay, so as the industries evolve over the years, you know, their, their products become more high-tech. You know, our motorcycles have become a lot more uh, technical over the years as well as anything with wheels, really. And so they need this reliable communication system, like I just mentioned, because that becomes paramount when you're starting to plug in uh, a bunch of different devices. Imagine 100 ECUs talking to each other. It's 100 computers talking to each other. All right, so the, the pros and the cons of this system. Um, well, the pros are, are what I just mentioned, that everything can communicate, and they can do it in real time. And we're talking milliseconds here. You know, uh, the... The main ECU has to talk to the power valve ECU to, you know, make sure that it's operating correct, correctly at every RPM level. Just that type of stuff. You know, and it seems like a, a complicated system, and, and it's going to feel that way to most guys that have not been around it before. But, you know, I've been around uh, this CAN bus system for a number of years. Um, and, it's, it, and at first it was kind of, baffling but it really isn't it's really a very simple system and and like i said before it's very reliable uh, and and some of the ways that it obtains that reliability is that it uh, really minimizes electronic noise and interference so that allows for more accurate data transmission you know the the can bus basically you can think it of as a, as a multitasking multitasking uh uh, master because you know it, it's doing a thousand things at a time and it's doing them every second you know it, it, this is not a slow process this is going on it's kind of like the nervous system in a person you know when you're just think of when you're walking down the sidewalk what all is going on to make that happen you know there's a lot of communication going on there between all your different nerves your muscles and your brain t for you to just walk just that one simple thing, what we think of as simple as walk. But for those of us who have lost mobility at different times in our life, I have, uh, you realize how important that mobility is and that communication is uh, in your, within your body. And then, uh, you know, the real-time aspect is, is the really cool part of it. Because, you know, there's just a lot going on all, all the time. I mean... Sometimes when I'm just cruising down a dirt road, getting, getting down to the next trailhead or something, I think about that. I think about the wheels turning and the gears and the transmission and piston going up and down, this and that. 
Well, that's what's going on uh, within the CAN bus system. It's talking to the ignition system, the fuel injection system, the charging system, the power valves, the ABS brakes if you have them, the, the traction control if you have it. Uh, you know, it's it's there's a chit chat going on between all those things all the time. And then one thing I really like uh, about CAN bus is its ability to uh, detect and correct uh, errors. Um, you know, corrupt data that has gone down the down the line. And this happens. Uh, you know, like I said, in real time, and it happens very fast, and you don't even know that's going on. So there could be some little glitch in the data, and it will correct it and eliminate that error, uh, error code. Uh, and then another uh, positive thing about CAN bus is that it's very scalable. So um, as the product, you know, the motorcycle evolves over time, and you want to add more bells and whistles to it, you can with the CAN bus system. It's, it's set up for, for doing that. All right, so the cons, the negatives of CAN bus. Well, there really are no big standout uh, negatives to CAN bus. It can, you know, like I said before, it can be confusing to home tuners uh, at first, but I think you're going to get adjusted to it quickly. Uh, and it's mainly going to be confusing when you're trying to add accessories to the bike. Right? Because each one of those different components on the bike, like I said, that has an identifier to it. Um, if Let me see how to explain this. Um, if you change that component. All right, so just an example. So adventure bikes, quite a few of them come with heated grips from the factory. All right, well, if you decided you don't like that style of grip or something about that product, and you want to just put on a universal set that you can buy from any of the any vendor or motorcycle shop. So you buy a universal set of heated grips and you plug those in, it's going to probably throw an error code and not work. Uh, because the specifications for those aftermarket grips that you bought, those heated grips, are not exactly the same what was on there. And so when the CAN system starts communicating, that's going to give it corrupt information. And so that's going to be a deal breaker. So quite often when you're adding accessories uh, on electronic accessories t to your bike, like heated grips, like auxiliary lights, um, I don't know, whatever you, you guys want to plug in, uh, you're probably going to have to wire it directly to the battery, which will bypass the CAN bus system. Now, that's not the case always. And some manufacturers, uh, especially in the automotive industry, they're already up to speed. So they're, they make accessories that, are, that uh, match or are compatible with the CAN bus system. But the motorcycle industry is not there yet. So typically, if you're going to plug in some electronic device, you need to to go directly to the battery. And then if you're going to have more than one or two electronic devices, you might have to have some type of a, a block terminal to run uh, from the battery to that terminal and then run all your wires, your accessory wires to that block. Alrighty. Um, other than that, you know, they're really not, like I said, there's just, it's very reliable and simple system really so that it doesn't really have a lot of negatives you know, it does have some bandwidth limitations when when they when more and more things are added onto the system but other than that i can only think the only, the only downside of it is it just seems like voodoo you know uh, it's like any other electronic thing on your bike you can't see it doing anything you can't see a battery doing anything but it's putting out juice you can't see that can those ecus doing anything but they're doing a lot of talking and, and making your bike work. And so, you know, that's what a CAN bus system is. It's, it seems like voodoo because it's not something that you can touch and feel and grab and hug. You know, it's it's just not not that thing. Other than that, guys, uh, I hope that this video has helped you. If it has, uh, I sure appreciate your help by liking us on Instagram and Facebook and subscribing to us on YouTube. Uh, I'm sure this is, this subject's going to generate a lot of questions. And like I said before, you're welcome to post them below. I'll do my best to answer them quickly. 
Uh, sometimes I'm not on a ride and I don't get to them for a little bit, but most of the time I answer within 24 hours on, on comments. If, if it's a reasonable comment, if you're not using cuss words, if you're not making racist comments or some other negative comment or bashing somebody, uh, a competitor or, or me or whatever, I don't deal with any of those. I just delete them. But if you post a, you know, a legit, reasonable comment, I'm more than happy to answer it. I don't consider any of them stupid. So if you have what you think is a stupid question, please post it. Somebody else is going to have the same question. Um, so just uh, do what you got to do. And guys, I hope I see you out on the trail this summer. If you're in Colorado, I'd like to ride with you. So uh, it's all for now.